Hi everyone. I've been reading the book of uh, 1 Samuel this week and was really blessed this morning by the story in chapter 14 about Jonathan's courageous victory. I thought it fit really well with some of the teaching that we've had lately. The situation was this. The Philistines had invaded Israel with a gigantic army. It says, uh, chapter 13, there were 30,000 chariots, 6,000 horsemen, and people like the sand which is on the seashore in abundance. So just picture this absolutely vast army camped out there. Meanwhile, Israel's army is in disarray. They, they don't even have weapons. They are, they are going around trying to sharpen up their farm tools. Um, it, it says, on the day of battle, neither sword nor spear was found in the hands of any of the people who were with Saul and Jonathan. So things seemed really bleak that day, but God gave a massive victory, and he did so largely through the instrumentality of one young man doing one really bold action. Here's the key verse uh, that I've written part of up here. 1 Samuel 14, 6, Jonathan said to the young man who was carrying his armor, Come, let us cross over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. Perhaps the Lord will work for us. For the Lord is not restrained to save by many or by few. Jonathan understood a crucial principle in the ways of God, didn't he? He understood that God was not obligated and God was not limited by the size of the resources. Whether you're many or few really doesn't matter when you're dealing with God doing things. See, Jonathan had done the math. He had looked out at that massive Philistine army. He knew what was coming at him. He knew it was going to take a divine miracle to keep the nation from being destroyed. And he figured, well, if it's going to take a miracle... <laughs> Then, then it doesn't matter too much whether it's a thousand people with farm tools attacking the Philistines or whether it's just two guys attacking them. And I say two guys because Jonathan was not alone in this, was he? Um, it, yeah, it was his idea, but he had the encouragement and help of a friend, his faithful armor bearer. And, 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 he, and when he talks to the armor bearer, the, the guy says, do all that is in your heart. Turn yourself and here I am with you according to your desire. And two are better than one, aren't they? And, and so here these two friends have this, this crazy plan. Let's just crawl up this hill and we'll just attack this big bunch of Philistines up at the top. They have this idea, um, and it's, it's really bold and crazy, but I, I so much appreciate Jonathan's caution in the thing. He says here, perhaps, perhaps the Lord will work uh, for us. Um, he's not sure yet. He, ha he has this idea, but he's not sure yet if it's, if it's really God's leading or not. He realizes he could be wrong. He realizes maybe this whole thing is just like reckless presumption. Maybe this is just immature, youthful exuberance. And, and so he creates a test to discern God's guidance uh, for his plan. And in the next verse, verse 8, he, he says, Behold, we'll cross over to the men and reveal ourselves to them. If they say to us, Wait until we come down to you, then we will stand in our place and not go up to them. But if they say, Come up to us, then we will go up. For the Lord has given them into our hands, and this shall be the sign to us. So he gives God the opportunity to just shut the whole thing down. Lord, if this is not of you, then have him say the other thing. But 
course, the men respond just exactly as Jonathan had set up the test. They say, oh, yeah, come on up, come on up. And, and so that's all the encouragement Jonathan needed. He says to his armor bearer in, in verse 12, come up after me, for the Lord has given them into the hands of Israel. Before it was perhaps, now there's certainty. Now it's been confirmed. Um, and, and so he's confident He's confident climbing up that hill. Think of it. This was not a very good strategy, right? Um, <laughs> to, be, to be climbing up a hill so steep, it says they had to use their hands uh, and feet to get up it. And, and you know that there's a much larger force up at the top, guys with their weapons out waiting for you to get to the top of the hill. It doesn't seem that smart. And when they get to the top, their, their success starts out really small. Really small. Uh, it says in verse 14, that first slaughter which Jonathan and his armor uh, bearer made was about 20 men within about half a furrow in an acre of land. So God helped. God helped and they got 20 guys. You know, that's nice. That's nice. Um... But it's just a drop in the bucket. I mean, this this army is like is like the sand of the seashore. Twenty guys doesn't matter at all. Twenty guys doesn't get you anywhere. Twenty guys doesn't change the game. It's nothing. But it was not nothing. It was actually a really big thing, because that one act of boldness triggered a chain reaction of fear that swept through the whole, whole Philistine army. Uh, the next verse says, verse 15, there was a trembling in the camp, in the field, and among all the people. Even the garrison and the raiders trembled, and the earth quaked so that it became a great trembling. You actually end up with an earthquake uh, accentuating the fear that was building in that army. And, and the next verse says, Saul's watchman in Gibeah of Benjamin looked, and behold, the multitude melted away. <laughs> that army is melting away before their eyes, running away because of the action of one guy, two guys climbing a hill and killing 20 of their troops. And it, so it turns into this big day of victory. And, and at the end of the day, the Israelites declare this. They say, Jonathan has worked with God this day. That's down in verse 45. Jonathan has worked with God this day. Um, and very similar to, to what he says in, up here in verse 6. Perhaps the Lord will work for us. The Lord did work with him. It worked work for him that day. Um, see, when you're working with God, it doesn't matter if you're many or if you're few. It doesn't matter. Even if you're just two guys, it doesn't matter. Listen, brethren, this is something we need to learn. Any calculation we make in which the conclusion is that God cannot do something or God will not do something merely because the numbers aren't big enough. That conclusion is false. It's false. Now, now that calculation might work for everything else. It might work for everything else. But it does not apply when you're talking about working with the Almighty God. He's not restrained to save by many or by few. It's just irrelevant. When we can confirm like Jonathan did in the story that, that this is truly God leading us, then we can climb up that hill in confidence that He's going to be with us when we face whatever is up there at the top. We must get rid of this thinking that if only we had more resources. You know, 
If only we had more money, if we had more real estate, if we had more people, if we had the right kind of people, then, then we could maybe make an impact for the Lord. But, you know, we're just too small, we're too few, we're too weak, and so why even bother? Oh, praise God, Jonathan did not think that way. Praise God, the, the, the men and women of courageous faith in the Bible, they didn't think that way. And down through church history, the people that made an impact for the Lord, they didn't think that way either. Instead, each time they trusted God with their littleness, with their in, inadequacy, with their pathetic little resources of their pathetic little abilities. They, they, they trusted God with their weak efforts. And the Lord again and again was pleased to take their little and multiply it and turn it into much more than they ever expected. Maybe it's just a drop in the bucket, but, but, but I'm going to trust God. I'm going to try it anyway. I'm going to see. I'm going to see what He does. Who knows what God has in view today? Who knows what God plan has planned? Who knows how big this is going to get? Remember Gideon's victory back in Judges. Um, <laughs> I mean, his his army was way outnumbered. And then God comes to him and says, Gideon, your army's too big. <laughs> it's too big. And, and they end up sending home over 99% of his troops. And then he takes the few that are left. And God gives them a complete victory that day. Um, five loaves and two fish. <laughs> That's nothing. That's nothing if, you're, if you've got to feed 5,000 people. But if you take five loaves and two fish and you give them to the Lord Jesus in faith and trust Jesus to, to take them and, and multiply them, and that changes the story, doesn't it? Brethren, don't despise the day of small things. Don't underestimate what you alone or what you with one friend or what you with a, a little group of faithful friends can accomplish for the Lord. He's not restrained to save by many or by few because you're working with the God who's able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. Perhaps the Lord will work for us. <laughs> I think He will work for us when we trust Him. Because He's not restrained to save by many or by few. Amen.